This is What School Didn't Teach Me, a podcast meant to build community on all the things school doesn't prepare you for. Hi, I'm your host, Jasmine Piamber, and class is in session. Hello, classmates. Y'all already know what time it is. It's your host, Jasmine Camber, and we're back. We are back in the classroom. Uh, welcome back to the classroom. If you know, we took a, like a three-week break, y'all, and the three-week break was well needed. Um, I'm just a girl. <laughs> I'm just a girl, um, and sometimes life can get a little overwhelming. Sometimes I can feel like my head is a little above water. I mean, a little below water. And every now and again, I'm gonna need a break to just get my life right. Make sure the podcast is on track. Make sure my life is on track before we continue. So I appreciate y'all being patient with me and just rocking with me. How y'all rocking with me? I feel like in a couple of years or as the podcast progress, things that, um, things that cause me to have to take breaks won't even be an issue anymore like taking breaks won't even be a noticeable issue anymore but for now we just working with what we got you know um second thing everybody look at my bracelet i don't know if you can see i don't know if the camera is focusing but it has a little gummy bear on it my kids made that for me my kids made me a bracelet and it just made me feel so good and so i just wanted everybody to stop and look at my bracelet yeah um today's episode is a christmas episode and i literally had no idea what i wanted today's episode to be uh what i wanted today's episode to be about like christmas is coming up and for whatever reason it does not feel like christmas i don't know what that's about i don't know what's going on but it just does not feel like christmas it's like it's warmer outside. It's like it's warm in the day and then it's freezing cold at night. But it's warmer outside. It's sunnier outside. Um, I haven't experienced snow in years, so snow isn't even a factor. But it's like, you know, I'm I'm listening to music on my Bluetooth, so I'm not hearing the Christmas music. Something about it just does not feel like Christmas to me, and I just want to change that. Now, we have some decorations up. We literally have our little stocking stuffers up, but, like, my mom and I, we haven't gotten a tree in years. And I would like to change that, I mean, probably, like, next year. Uh, so this time next year, I feel like I'll be singing a whole different tune. This time next year, I'll be, like all over the Christmas season. It'll be December 1st and you will hear me talking about Christmas. Um, but this year, I just didn't know. It just did not feel like Christmas. Like it has not felt like it's time to pop out the apple cider and the eggnog. It's time to make gingerbread houses and go ice skating. Like it just has not felt like that. And I think that's what made it hard to like curate a Christmas episode. That and this is our first Christmas together. You know, it's our first time spending the holidays together um, in the classroom. And so I just was trying to figure out like what is today's episode supposed to be about? Because I don't want to do a organic, I'm sorry, organic is not the word. I don't want to do a generic cliche this is what I'm asking for for Christmas or like this is my grown up Christmas list and it'd be a whole list of like functional things that you want as you get older. Like, no, I wanted it to be lighthearted at least like lighthearted or personable or just, I don't know, natural. And I wish, I wish I had a Christmas hat. That's what I wish I had a Christmas hat. If I could like put a little Christmas hat up here, we'll see. We'll see if I can do that. Um, but yeah, since I did not want this Christmas episode to be ingenuine, I wanted to start off with a question. What are you asking God for for Christmas? That's going to be like the whole premise of the episode, at least for me, because I want to tell you what I'm asking God for for Christmas. Um, 2023 has been amazing. It's crazy because it does not feel like Christmas, but I am really, really looking forward to the new year. I am really looking forward to 2024, and that's all I've been looking at for the past couple couple weeks. And 2023 has been, like, amazing. So amazing that I haven't even thought of what I wanted for Christmas. My mom asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and I'm just like, 
I have no idea. Like, I have no idea. Not because I have everything I want in this life. Not because my life is perfect. Just because I've been, like, living every day. And every day has been cool. Um, But I have been asking God for things throughout this year. And I have either gotten it or I haven't. And I am asking God for something very, very special this year. And I'm saying it now so that when it comes true... We can give a little recap, you know, we can give a little recap, um, yeah, so that y'all can see that my God is real, amen. Yeah, what are you asking God for for Christmas? We ask for things from our parents, we ask for things from our significant others, from our siblings, we have this curated list of what we want, we do Secret Santa, we have this list of things that we want from people for Christmas by a certain day, by a certain time. And then we still have like a huge prayer list of things, a whole checklist of things we want God to fulfill for us. So what are you asking for? What are you asking God for for Christmas? And I know that I have like a list of things that I want from God. I'm, every day I'm asking God for clarity. Every day I'm asking God for direction. Every day I'm like, Lord, I just need you to make sure that I'm on the right track. I just need you to make sure that, you know, when I step my foot to go left, you're really telling me to go left and not right. You know, I just need to make sure that we are on the same page as it relates to my life, you know. But One thing that I have really, really been wanting from God, specifically this year, is a new home. Yeah, that is what I'm asking God for for Christmas. And I know, like, he's not going to, he's not going to boom, well, I don't want to put any limitation on God. But it's not going to be like, boom, Christmas Day, I got a home. No, like, it's literally one week before Christmas. But I am writing my Christmas list for God. For 2024 okay because i know he's gonna make it happen i know he's gonna make it happen next year um but that that is what's on my christmas list like that is the one thing that i want from god for next year you know like when we were growing up it was always that one thing that you really really wanted from your parents like mom if you don't give me the nerf gun if you don't give me the dsi if you don't give me the little and the um the automatic car that drives when I press the gas pedal, please, please, please make sure you get me the Barbie dream house. If I don't get anything else on that list, make sure you give me the Barbie dream house. Make sure you give me that one thing that I really, really want. And if I don't get nothing else, baby, I want a new house, okay? I want a new house. I want a new space. I want what school didn't teach me to have their own space. Um, We are always... I have a vision for what school didn't teach me. What school didn't teach me is so much bigger than a podcast. And the vision that I have for what school didn't teach me is big. It's big. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than a podcast. It's bigger than this room. And I am praying and asking God for like that next space, that next level, that space that will take us or help me take us to the next level. So yeah, I'm praying for a new house. And, you know, with your prayers, when you're asking God for stuff, just like when you ask your, it's always one parent. But for me, like, it's, 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 most of the time it's your dad. Like, just like when you ask your dad for stuff, you have to be very specific. Like, this is the one I want. This is the color I want it in. These are the multiple different places you can get it. Like, you got to be very specific when you ask certain people for certain things. It's the same thing with God. You got to be very specific in your prayers and the things that you want from God. And one thing that I'm making sure that is in my list, like, yes, Lord, I want a new house. Yes, Lord, I want a new house with a walk-in closet and a vanity space and my own bathroom. But more specifically, I want a new house that will give what school didn't teach me its own room so that I can have my own little studio in my house. That is what I'm asking for. That is what I'm asking for for Christmas. Um, yeah. What school didn't teach me? What school didn't teach me is my baby. And I do not play by my baby. I have had to reiterate that to people lately because that's come up lately. Like, just the passion that I feel about this podcast. And I hope that y'all see it. I know that we take breaks. I know we took a break after my graduation for the new season. I know that... Um, like last semester I had a couple tardy slips this, this 
last semester, last year, or last season, I had a couple tardy slips. This year, I had to take a whole week break, but I hope that y'all see the intention that I have behind this podcast. And if you don't, you will. Don't even trip. Like, we are working. We are working. We are always working. And I am working on just continually building up what school did teach me as an empire. Um, yeah. And so I want to ask y'all, or at least that's my question to y'all. What are you asking God for? You know, maybe you're not asking God for a new house. Maybe you're asking God for a boot thing. It ain't nothing wrong with asking God for a boot thing. Just be specific. Be specific. When you write your Christmas list to God, be like, I want a boo thing. Don't just leave it at that. Say, I want a boo thing that will make me feel like they fell in the notebook. I don't know. They was together for like years and then they died holding hands. You know, I want to love like the one in, in the boo, in the notebook. Um, I want a love that won't make me feel like I'm Will and they're Jada. I, I don't know. You know, like, be specific with your Christmas list to God. Um, because I was doing devotional this morning, y'all, and devotional was so good. The devotional was so good, and it showed me or reminded me, like, uh, and it showed me or reminded me, I was reading Jeremiah 27. I should really look. I think I was reading Jeremiah 27, 13 let me see boom sorry I was reading Jeremiah 29 Jeremiah 29 11 through 14 and 12 and 13 says of course like everybody knows Jeremiah 11 for I know the plans that I have for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future and then 12 says and then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you and then 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And it literally put me on like this whole rampage of like, what does it mean to seek God with all your heart? What does that look like? Does it look like fasting? Does it look like praying? Does it look like, you know, like not giving up on your faith? Like, what does it mean to seek God with all of your heart? And the Lord gave me an answer for that in like Luke, Luke 13, 5. Hold on. It's, I'm like, everybody knows this part. Everybody knows this scripture. It's like a scripture when the Lord says a lot of people will try to get into the gates of heaven, but not everybody will. <laughs> I'll see people, they'll try to get in, and it's like, I never knew you. Get away from me. Let me see. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, boom. It says, it's, it's, it's Luke. Hold on. Hold on. It's Luke 13, 23, and 24. It says, Lord... Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and not be able to. And then he says, you know, and then 27, it says, but then he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from away from me, all you evildoers. But in 27, like literally the Lord said, I, after I asked the question, like, what does it mean to see God with all your heart? The Lord said. He said, go to Luke 13. I said, okay, bet. I literally read, well, I didn't read the whole chapter because I stopped when I felt like I found what I was looking for. But I read all the way up to, um, I read all the way up to Luke 13, 30. Um, and it literally says like, make many efforts, make many efforts to go through the narrow door that is salvation. And yeah, it just put me on this whole rampage about like how, you know, when you are looking for God and when you are waiting on God, it is a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of falling down and getting back up. It's a lot of sinning and repenting. It's a lot of walking away from God and then embracing him all over again. And you just have to continually, like, you just have to keep trying. Because if you just say, oh, I tried, if you just try to, if you try to squeeze through the door and you say, oh, I fell, oh, I sinned, and then you walk away, that's not going to get you into heaven. Like, that is not the meaning of the Christian walk. The Christian walk is literally about falling and getting up again and then telling people about how you fell and got up again. 
and like watching how that edifies people and then edifies yourself so that you can get a relationship with God. I was mentioning being specific with God to say that when you go back and you look at Jeremiah, at Jeremiah 29, 12, he says, when you pray to me, I will hear you. You will come to me, you will pray to me, and I will listen to you. The Lord is listening to what you are praying for. He is listening to what you want. And my best friend will always remind me, the Lord cares about the things that we care about. He does. The Lord is listening to what you want. So if there's something that you are asking for, for God, if there is something that is on your Christmas list, not not something that somebody else can give you, not something that, you know, you want from your friends. No, like if there is something bigger, something that only God can give you, write that down. Write that down. Be praying about it and pray specifically. Maybe what you want is not a boo thing. Maybe you don't want a house. Maybe you want more patience. That's a big one. I know a lot of people who are praying to God for patience. Every now and again, I got to remind myself my patience is not my, you know, I, that I'm still human and I still got a whole lot of work to do. Maybe you're praying to God for patience. Okay. Be specific. Lord, I want to be patient so that this, this, and this don't bother me. I want to be so patient that being around this person doesn't irk my nerves anymore. I want to be so patient that people see you coming out of me. Like, be specific with your prayers to God because he is listening and he cares and he cares. Like, maybe maybe what you want, maybe you're not asking for a house. Maybe you're not asking for a boo thing. Maybe you're not asking for patience. Maybe you're asking for new friends. Y'all know friendship is my favorite topic and I still got a whole lot of work to do with my own friendships. So it's an ongoing conversation to be had about friendships. But I told y'all in season one, I was very specific with God about the kind of friends that I wanted. My notebook is literally in front of me and I wish I could lean over to get it, but I won't. But I had a whole list of requirements and things that I wanted and things that I expected out of my current friendships within the new friends I wanted God to give me and after I made my um after I made my list and checked it twice I put scriptures next to the things that I wanted next to the requirements I had for these friendships because I wanted to hold God accountable to his word. I wanted to make sure that the friendships that I wanted were were in line with what he wanted for me. And then I wanted to hold God accountable to his word. So that's another thing that I suggest. When you're asking God for something, see what God says about that that same thing. Anytime, anytime you have a question, I'm quick, I'm a I'm quick to Google things. Anytime I have a question about what God wants for me or what God says about this, that, and the third, I'm quick to look it up. And not just like, what what does God say about this? Well, no, just that. I say, what does God say about this? And I will read the scriptures. And sometimes they're context if I need more. I will read the scriptures that specifically talk about what I want. I won't, I'm, if I need more clarification, I might read a vlog. But vlogs are man-made, so I don't, you know, I take those with a grain of salt. I'm always looking for what God is saying about X, Y, Z that I am asking for. So hold God accountable. If there's something you are asking for, if you're asking for patience, write that down. Write that down on your Christmas list to God. And look up what the Bible says about patience and how important it is and how, you know, how your tongue is a double-edged sword and so if you don't have patience you can hurt yourself and other people look that stuff up look it up and write it down so that you make sure you are holding God accountable to what he said we will have okay and then trust him for it like of course the whole thing is about trusting God you'll never get what you want out of God if you don't actually trust him for it and you'll just be waiting for you'll just be waiting to get disappointed because you didn't believe and I can only say it because I lived through it. I can only tell you what I know. <laughs> but yeah, like what? What are you asking God for this year? You know, people have asked things of you this year and you've either been able to give it or not. You'll ask things of other people for Christmas. You know what I'm saying? The year has been a lot. But what is bigger than what another person can give you? Like, in you making your Christmas list to other people, do not forget to make a Christmas list to God because he can give you things that man cannot. 
I got a couple more things on my list. Um, I got a couple more things on my list to God, but not too many. The biggest thing that I'm asking for is to help make what school didn't teach me, to take the vision that I had for what school didn't teach me and to bring it into fruition. So when I, as it happens, and that's what I'm seeing for 2024, as it happens, I can't wait to take y'all on the journey. And I would love to know what y'all are looking for, what y'all are looking for in this Christmas season, what y'all are looking for for God, looking for from God in this next season. Like we all should be expecting something new. So yeah, this episode is short because that was it. I just want y'all to come and start thinking about what y'all want to ask God for. I mean, we ask for God for stuff all year, but like, you know, come on. And to not forget, you know, in all of your Christmas is about God. Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. And so in all of your man-made activities to be exchanging gifts with other people to engage in the winter activities in all of that, don't forget about Jesus. Don't forget about what God can do for you. Um, That's it. I'll see y'all next week. And I'm really excited for next week. Yeah. I love y'all. Bye.